Welcome to Free Recovery. Great to have you with us. This is session eight, and it's called Children, Not Slaves. The key verse for this session is Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. This verse describes what it means to walk as children of God in the freedom he gives us. How do we let the Holy Spirit guide our lives? That's a great question. The Bible tells us. We need to listen carefully and obey. We listen by reading the Bible so that we know God better and know his will for our lives. We need to continually pray that God would help us to live his way and surrender our own will. We need to honestly desire change. God won't force us against our will. That's huge. We need to be obedient to God even when we don't want to. So we're talking about relationship with him and through his word too. That's, that's really what we're discussing. We're talking to him and praying to him and reading his word and being involved with God. Yeah. Being a child of God involves learning to walk in his ways. And in the Old Testament, there was the law, which you might know as the Ten Commandments. These were the core of how people in the Old Testament had to obey God. They soon found out that these were impossible to obey all the time. Following a set of rules and regulations does not make us free. It enslaves us because it shows us that we are unable to live up to the demands of the law. No. It demands human effort, which is imperfect because we are sinners, rebels against God's rule and authority over our lives. We simply can't keep God's law perfectly. And when we use drugs, alcohol, or anything to excess, self-harm, gamble, watch porn, or act out other addictive behaviors, we are living in slavery to that addictive behavior. We are not free. We don't even have the human effort to change our behavior. Remember week one's key verse? I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. For what I hate, I do. That was found in Romans chapter 7, verse 15. Mm-hmm. There is hope. God has given us as his children a gift, the Holy Spirit. He now becomes our guide, comforter, help, and power to live our new life in Christ. God puts his Holy Spirit into the hearts of believers, just as Paul writes in Romans 8, verse 16. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. So we are now children of God and no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer slaves to sin. That's wonderful. Maybe you have given your life to Christ, but still have a deep struggle with your flesh. Mm -hmm. Maybe it has been difficult for you to live a Christian life, and so you're full of guilt and shame. Hopefully, you are now beginning to understand that there is a way to be free of your addictive behavior and your guilt and shame by the mercy and grace of God. Christ has set you free. We hope that as you've taken this course, you've started to understand the freedom of Christ in our experiencing and living in this freedom. As we heard earlier in this course, Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. So we see that it's possible for us to pick up the yoke of slavery again. Just as you can put a heavy bag down because it's too much to carry, but 10 minutes later pick it up again, we can choose to pick up our slavery again. Yeah. As children of God, we have been set free. But are we living in our freedom? Or are we still acting as if we're living in slavery? Great question. Later on in chapter 5 of Galatians verse 13, Paul urges believers by saying, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but did not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. In other words, stop looking inwards and start reaching out to others. This is one important way your focus will start to change. But how do we do this? How do we live out this new focus? Well, David White said in Sexual Sanity for Men, It's a slow process learning to undo patterns of thinking and entrenched behaviors that have been in place, sometimes for decades. 
But true transformation is possible. Nothing short of radical recreation is in view in the gospel of Jesus Christ. As Paul encourages us in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Our new focus must be on Christ himself in his word. As we do this, he slowly begins to transform us and conform us to himself. This does not mean we sit on our favorite armchair drinking coffee, having no responsibility in this process of change. God doesn't force us to cooperate. He gives us the power to change by the Holy Spirit. He gives us a new heart and transforms our minds as we focus on him, read his word, and pray. Our new focus is also the awareness of the choices we now have. The power of sin in our lives has been broken, and so we can choose to act rightly. We can choose not to rebel and not to sin. In fact, Paul said in Romans chapter 6, verse 11, that we should count ourselves dead to sin, but alive to God and Christ Jesus. When faced with sin, we can now say, I'm dead to that. We're dead to sin only because Christ died and rose again, giving repentant believers a transformed life. The power for change is in Christ, not in your own ability to transform yourself. Our Abba Father loves you and wants to see you become more like Jesus in character and behavior. But you have a part to play in this. You need to give your life to him. Your flesh is in rebellion against God, and you are a rebel. You experience this every day as you try to stop your destructive behaviors. Yet again and again, you fall back into the same sins. But be assured that there is a way through all of this. That's right. And there I'm, is I'm thinking a way. Of, of a time when both of us went through a year. Do you remember 2004? Yeah. When we surrendered our single lives to the Lord. Yeah. We were both trapped in other relationships. Yeah. And we'd got trapped in them. And both of us at different times stopped and surrendered our single life to, to the Lord. And in some way, God took those. And I was free from that past relationship. I was too. Yeah. So it is possible to be free. The bad news, however is that there are consequences to our rebellious behavior. We are familiar with the consequences of our addictive behavior that are happening right now, such as family members getting angry, employers disciplining us, health problems, money problems, and even homelessness. But there are also consequences in the judgment of God. It is far better to put this right now by repenting and believing in Jesus talking honestly with God, confessing our sins, than to face those consequences later on Judgment Day. If you are not a Christian, this would be a good time to become one. Take a moment to pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust you and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In your name I pray. Amen. If you prayed this prayer for the very first time, please connect with your facilitator, Pastor or Vicar, and they will help you get started. You can always connect with us too. We can help you. Yeah. Tim Chester says in his book, You Can Change, God's agenda for our lives is for us to be holy, just as he is holy. This holiness is the fruit of what we think or trust and what we desire or worship. We've seen that sinful behavior and negative emotions arise when we believe lies about God instead of trusting God's word. Tim Chester goes on to say, Sin arises because we desire something more than we desire God. Overcoming sin begins by reversing this process, desiring God more than sin. In fact, changing our focus. If you've just become a Christian, You Can Change by Tim Chester is a great book to read. So you may now be thinking, okay, so how do I change my focus? 
Well, that's an excellent question. Let's first look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. This verse is very much about changing focus. We're being encouraged to remember the cost of sin, feeding the desires of the flesh and the addictive behaviors, and reminded of the gift of eternal life. Paul encourages another focus in Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Let's not be weary in doing good. For the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Yeah, you know, as we read Paul's work in the New Testament, it's almost like he knows all about addiction because he's talking about all those principles. Yes. We can make good choices to the benefit of our brothers and sisters in Christ, the world around us, and ourselves. On the other hand, entertaining or making provision for sin is the best way to sabotage ourselves and our relationships. Yeah, it is. Also, people, places, and circumstances that encourage our sinful, addictive behaviors, they need to be avoided. A friend once said, I live on the same street as my heroin dealer. So when I go to or from my house, I always go the opposite direction. She's avoiding the temptation as best she can under the circumstances. She was unable to move, you know. Yeah. Most of it, we say, move move away from the, the area. But, Definitely. But she, she wasn't able to do that, was she? She was not. Now, we don't change by avoiding sin. But by avoiding sin, we do enhance the environment in which change takes place. And don't forget the word halt. Hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. Beware where these symptoms rear their ugly heads. It was just Monday that I had that in my head because at least two or three of the hungry, angry, lonely, and tired I was going through, and I wasn't being the most kind person that I could be. <laughs> we made it through the day, though. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons that each of us have decided to embark on a course such as this is the realization that we're unable to change ourselves. Tim Chester says in his book, You Can Change. It's God who changes us. We participate in the process through faith and repentance. The same can be said for refocusing our minds. We read in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Solid food is the complete teaching of the Word of God, the Bible. We are encouraged to study the Bible so that we grow and we mature and then can discern good from evil. Yeah. Not just our outward behaviors, but our thought life as well. So that Change can take place there in our minds and in our hearts and our lives. The reason this course is full of God's Word is that we need it. The Word brings change in us, constantly encouraging us to seek God through His Son, Jesus. Part of what has happened in our lives with our addictive behaviors is that we have tried to fill the God-sized hole in our hearts with all sorts of sin and addictive behaviors because we have believed the lie that God is not enough. One of the truths we have discovered in the process is that no amount of anything else can possibly fill that hole in our hearts. It can only be filled by God. So how do we change our focus? By actively engaging our minds to seek God. We've got to make a conscious choice, don't we? Every day, moment by moment. Yeah. By actively engaging our minds to seek God through his word, prayer, fellowship, worship, and service to God and others. This is what being children of God is really all about. As believers, we are children of God and co-heirs with Christ. We are no longer slaves to our former thinking or our addictive behaviors. We are free. Wow, did you hear that? Co-heirs with Christ. Wow. That is so important to remember that. We skip over that sometimes. It's we? very easy to skip by that one. This week, remember to talk to God, connect with God's people, and read his word. 
practice being thankful. And once again, I'm going to finish with your ironic blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. God bless you.